Before we begin, make sure you have the channel notification bell turned on so you don't miss an upload. With the holidays coming up, we have a lot of videos coming. Don't miss out. What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, back at episode 194 of Room Tour Project, the series where we show off some of the best setups to give you some ideas and inspirations for your own setup. If there's anything you like, I'll have it all listed for you in the description down below so you can check it out. But let's kick off episode 194. Excuse me, I didn't fully burp, but either way. First up, we have Dakota P with this really awesome converted dorm room gaming setup. And a few weeks ago, we had another dorm room setup, but this one here also doing some really cool things you could see before, very just bare and empty. Now, a really cool gaming setup. Got some Nano Leaf Aurora light panels to give the room some color. This faux brick backdrop along the wall, give it some nice accent and stuff as well. Let's dive into it. This is the Devoco Racing Gaming Chair, going along with this single monitor, the 34 inch LG Ultra Wide. Now, since these dorm room walls are like concrete, he obviously couldn't mount it to the wall, so he has this just on a like a monitor bracket. And there's a stand in front of it as well, so kind of hide that and give him some extra like shelving space on the desktop. Down to the peripherals, his keyboard is the brand new Logitech G915 wireless with Logitech G703 mouse. And charging that is the PowerPlay mouse pad. Then as for the PC, on the desk behind the setup where he has his TV is this mini ITX build. Inside here we have an Intel i9-9900K CPU. Looking like some sort of stock fan cooler on that, so I'm not really sure if that is actually an i9-9900K. With 32 gigs of RAM, uh, not too sure what the RAM is, there's no info on the motherboard. And the NVIDIA GTX 1660 Ti graphics card. Um, usually I don't critique things, but for a small build, I don't know if that 9900K would make sense if it's being throttled by that GPU and that fan. But regardless of the specs itself, the overall gaming room, I think, is just really cool. Again, a converted dorm room to give it just some actual life into this otherwise what would be boring concrete walls, you know? So this is just a complete renovation. Next up, we have Madrill with the three display set up here, going with the two on the bottom and the massive overhead TV up top. Everything here wall mounted, good job on cable management to hide it all. You love to see it. So for those two displays in the bottom, they are 24 inch MSI optics monitors with a 55 inch 4K LG TV as that overhead. So lots of screen real estate with a 55 inch TV. And by the way, I'm digging the Kanye vinyls you have mounted there off to the left side. Checking out the peripherals, we have the Anpro 2 keyboard with those HyperX Double Shot PBT keycaps for that nice RGB glow to it. With Logitech G703 mouse yet again. And for audio, the Astro A40 TR headset. And he's also got the Elgato Stream Deck on there for some, you know, extra macros and functions while gaming. Now over to the PC, this is a pre-built from iBuyPower, it's the Trace 2 RGB inside an Intel i7-8700K CPU with their own iBuyPower 120mm AIO. We have 16 gigs of XPG Z1 RAM on the MSI Z390A Pro motherboard and a Gigabyte RTX 2080 WinForce graphics card. And then across the room, if he wants to use that 55 inch TV as like an actual TV for watching movies, got a little casting couch there, some uh, nice like figures and collectible stuff up on the walls, uh, with RGB lighting in the shelves and stuff as well, just to add to the overall feel of the gaming room. So good stuff from a drill, and didn't even mention really the Star Wars theme he has going on with the wallpapers, the prints up on the wall. You might have seen a lot of these Star Wars collectibles and stuff, but yeah, I'm digging it. Now we have Victor with the whole Halloween theme set up. I'm really digging that. Uh, this was submitted obviously before Halloween. Unfortunately, I'm not getting to it until now. But either way, Victor, I appreciate the holiday feels. So for his monitors, this is actually crazy. Uh, that is a 65-inch HP Omen X Imperium. I had no idea that was even like a thing, but apparently it is, and it's massive. With 34-inch ultra-wide monitors from Samsung mounted on each side in the vertical orientation, just to give you an idea of how big that 65-incher is, because 34 inches vertically are massive as well. So 
Damn. Down to the peripherals, we have the Vortex Poker 3 RGB keyboard with the Logitech G502 mouse, the wireless light speed version, and then as for audio, powering his Hi-Fi Man HE 500 headphones are his amp and DAC, the shit Bifrost, and the shit Lair. I'm probably butchering those names, but the stack is the amp and DAC. And then over to the custom water-cooled PC, looking really nice and clean with the hardline cooling here. Great job all around on that. This is the Leon Lee PC-011 case inside the Intel i9-9900K CPU with 32 gigs of G-Skill Trident Z RGB RAM on an Asus ROG Maximus Extreme 11 motherboard and the EVGA RTX 2080 Ti XC gaming graphics card. Loving the color coordination there, all green PC, orange RGB lights around the setup, behind the PC, behind the desk, and even in the, the Vortex keyboard. Like I said before, fitting in with that Halloween theme, uh, but even just as it is, still a very nice looking setup. And then how about Kai J coming in with the very natural wooden theme. You got the plants around here, the nature wallpaper and stuff. A walnut and white color theme going on. I am always partially biased too. Plus the overhead monitor, two for two. Geometric shapes, all right, this is, let's hop into this one. The 34 inch Alienware ultra wide is the primary display with a 24 inch Dell monitor mounted as the overhead. Man, that walnut backdrop looks awesome. For the speakers here, these are the Fluence SX6 in white. And for the rest of the peripherals, the keyboard is a custom build. It's the XD84 with the KBD75 PCB, lubed Gateron yellow switches, and SA Ice keycaps. Real nice stuff there. And the Model O mouse as well. Really digging that color coordination. And then in the back, also the Elgato Stream Deck. And then also for audio, powering a Sennheiser HD6XX headphones is his amp and DAC, the JDS Labs Element. Over to the PC, a really sexy, clean ITX build in the NZXT H200i case. We have an Intel i7-7700K CPU with the Noctua NHD15S cooler with those Chromax kind of shields on it. 16 gigs of G-Skill Trident Z RGB RAM and the Founders Edition 2080 Ti graphics card with the NZXT G12 GPU cooler on there. Some braided cables, a little five inch LCD screen in there as well so we can monitor his temps and stuff like that. I, uh, I kind of want to steal this PC, not going to lie, man. So Kai coming in with a sneaky kind of favorite for one of the best of 2019. Definitely going to add this to the list for that end compilation video at the end of the year to wrap up 2019. But I just love the mood all around here. You also have the massive TV right across from the setup. It's just the RGB all around is flowing. You know, the, the warm lamp, the RGB lights that kind of match to everything. This is just killer in every way. Hello everyone, I'm the Nubifier and I run a small YouTube channel. Let me quickly take you through my setup. I do most of my gaming standing up in an anechoic studio that was built in the basement. The standing desk is bolted secure to the wall and it only serves to hold the controllers and input devices. The input devices are mounted on custom mounts by Monster Tech with dual Verpal joysticks, a Verpal throttle, a 10 keyless Corsair K65 and Corsair M65. I have been playing standing up for over 7 years, so I do get comments often about how uncomfortable it must be, but it isn't. I have a set of Atom Audio T7V near-field monitors placed on stands so that the tweeters are level with my ears when I'm standing. There's a Scarlet 2i2 with a cloud lifter to drive the Shure SM7B, and the 2i2 also does double duty as the DAC for the audio monitors. The monitors are the cornerstone of the whole room. It's a pair of 49-inch 32x9 LG monitors with a total usable space of 5120x2880. Games are played on the lower screen, leaving the second one for Discord, watching streams, or monitoring system temperatures. Having that much space is about as good as it gets for productivity type tasks, and being mounted to the ceiling ensures that it doesn't move around when moving controllers or typing. The PC is actually remote mounted outside of the studio, moving all of the sound and heat out with it. This system is an i9-9900K at 5.1GHz, cooled by a 280mm all-in-one with Noctua fans. It has 32 gigs at 3600MHz. The system drive is an Intel 900P PCI Express SSD, and there's also a 1TB 600P for data and recorded game footage. For graphics, an EVGA 2080 Ti Black, 
and everything runs on a Gigabyte motherboard that's attached to an open frame Thermaltake P3 without glass. I'll quickly go into detail about the rest of the studio. The studio has space for photographing B-roll, interviewing for podcasts, researching for videos, playing VR games, and it also has the MonsterTech MTX SimRig. The SimRig has its own dedicated PC with an Intel 8700K, 16 gigs of Corsair memory at 3200 MHz, two Samsung 500 gig SSDs, a Gigabyte RTX 2080 on a Gigabyte Micro ATX Z390 motherboard. Once again, all mounted up on a Thermaltake P3 case. The simulation rig is a modular MonsterTech MTX. This can be converted between racing and flight in a couple minutes. All of the road racing gear is made by Fnatic, and for flight, Verpal CM2 gimbals and Warbird pedals. The large carpeted area next to the sim rig is the play space for the Valve Index VR. The lighting in the entire studio is RGB Philips Hue, so you can achieve the right mood on voice command. Thanks very much to Random Frank P for showcasing the build. If anyone has any questions that I didn't cover or comment, please post below. This episode is brought to you by the Corsair Virtuoso RGB wireless gaming headset. With 50 millimeter drivers and a frequency range double that of typical gaming headsets, you are getting outstanding quality and premium build quality. This headset also has slipstream, making the connection to your PC blazing fast, while also providing one of the best microphones on a gaming headset on the market. To check it out, I'll put a link for you in the description down below. All right, guys, that'll wrap it up for episode 194 of Room Tour Project. Hope you all enjoyed. Don't forget, check the links in the description down below if it's anything you like. I have listed down there for you, as well as some very simple instructions on how to submit your setup if you want to be possibly considered in a future episode of Room Tour Project. Check the links down below for it all. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up to show your support. Feel free to follow me on Twitter, at RandomFrankP. And lastly, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Hope you enjoyed. Have a good day.